Thank you. Welcome to uh, Interconnected Households. We'll be talking about Zoom, live streaming, YouTube videos, and enabling prayer. And as we've been talking about in our conversations, this isn't necessarily about having the key to the technology, because it may well continue to be in your church that there is somebody else who actually manages the key and pulls it all together. But this will allow you to have the ability to lead worship in that situation. And, it, and if you are going to be the person who uh, might be pulling uh, all that together, then this will help you uh, as well. So uh, according to our poll results, most people have, for one reason or other, have not led a Zoom service or maybe been, they've had a little part in a Zoom service, which is lovely. They may not have led or may not have done live streaming and certainly not done uh, you, uh, YouTube, although we've got a significant minority who've actually done a, an, a, a, an important input to YouTube, which is very important. And I think most of us would just like to learn a little bit more. So just first of all, I'm going to step back and say, oh, yeah, sorry, I'll jump on a bit. I'm first of all going to explain that um, there's an important limitation about Zoom. That it was designed for office meetings. Meetings. It wasn't designed for church. I know it sounds obvious, but it was designed for uh, big companies where you have an office in New York and London and uh, Mumbai and that sort of thing. Uh, it was designed where offices have got very good internet speed. It was designed for speech. Uh, that has another limitation. And it has a focus on tools for productivity, which means it's incredibly good at things like everything you want for a really good meeting. So if you want to have polls which set, tell the speaker uh, what you know, that's good. And if you want to be able to share information in different ways, that's really good as well. Uh, so there's things like that, which you might say, oh, yes, but we're not a we're not a business. Uh, we're not going to do that. Uh, so it's just to be aware that that is the plus, but it's also the minus uh, in your situation. It works really well if you're in, let us say, here's an example. We've got the Holy Spirit Church in Big Town with Pastor Joe McCool. <laughs> they are all people based in big town they've all got good internet speed because they're fairly close to the node every town has a, an internet node in Brentwood where I live it's in the old post office office uh, or GPO office and that's off and away uh, in this cool Holy Spirit church they're all everybody's got tech experience with all the different techno platforms they're all up on they're like young people they've all got lots of experience there they've got a big worship team everybody plays instruments it's wonderful they like expect to have videos they expect to have a very uh cool experience and they're used to like i heard in um a church recently they said uh, as soon as they finish the work, the church, the service in Zoom, they go into breakout rooms, they meet new people, they have their coffee in the breakout rooms. It's an incredibly enabled experience. Now, what about the reality? Okay, St. Mary the Less, Little Puddlewick, where the internet speed is pretty poor and a lot of people have no computer skills or no computer they're very lonely and they lack relationship so they really like to be part of something but what does this mean for zoom services we've got that cartoon which you've seen before i expect the church the building is closed the church is open your challenge <laughs> should you wish to accept this is to have something provide something which Enables now. Somebody mentioned just now phoning in. Well, let's just think I'm about this little church in the middle of nowhere, which has very little technologically going for it. It has some very 
important uh, strengths about it. So Mary the Less has a focus on relationships. It's a church which is truly welcoming. It's a church which is not just friendly, it's friend making. It's a church which is including young and old, able, disabled people who are perhaps forgotten in the bigger techno church. And it remembers people when they don't come to church. Everybody gets remembered. So um, in this church, the core values, I suggest, will guide them. So let's have a little look at this core church. This is one of my little churches uh, in Mount Messing, <laughs> sitting in the middle of the fields. Uh, so what are the strengths that this church brings? Well, because it's truly welcoming, uh, they're going to make sure that uh, they think of everybody in this. They've, uh, beforehand, they have a little get together in the, before the service starts and everybody asks, how are you, what's going on? Because they're only a small number. They can ask those questions. That's one of the really good strengths of little churches is you can find out if old Joe uh, is, uh, has had a fall and he needs someone to look after him. Nobody gets forgotten. Uh, we've got phone users because some people haven't got computers. So there's a, a, a nice, when you set up a Zoom meeting, it asks, do you want to have phone links? Very useful. And so the leader of this, St. James and Mary the Less, has the phone numbers to hand, uh, has a list. And on that list, he says, oh, yes, I remember that phone number is uh, Joan, who's 90. Hello, Joan. I see your numbers there. Are you on? And they remember that Joan feels good. She feels part of this. She doesn't get muted, by the way. That's quite important. <laughs> we don't mute the phone users because they get an irritating message. Uh, everybody's got a backup service in their hands, which is either emailed or in some cases goes through the door the day before. So that's making so Mary the Less with all its weaknesses is actually an incredibly enabling church. Now so Mary the Less we manage the space confidently. We keep it simple. Now I'll talk about music in a minute. Uh, uh, I'm just going to say that there are problems with music uh, on Zoom and you one or two of you might have noticed that. Uh, it's not, there's technolo technology problems. So you might say, we'll just keep it very simple for our simple service. We have shared voices. Uh, we make sure that all the folks get a chance uh, to, to be included. So uh, one way of doing it might be that the, the, the lady, Joan on the phone uh, and uh, Vic on the phone, who's both in their 90s, are invited to be the people left unmuted when we do the responses. Everybody else would be left, would be asked to mute. But that would be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, so uh, we, we, we mute where appropriate or, or not. Uh, we make sure that the people who are most left out get their voice. We use lots of silence. Silence is golden, isn't it? But it's so precious. When we've had that chance to speak, it would be so nice if we get a chance for peacefulness. Oh, by the way, I've just mentioned about the muting. Uh, picture a case, you recognize the man in the middle. Uh, if you have everybody left unmuted and you do a service where uh, you've got lots of responses or you decide to do the Lord's Prayer all together, you get that golden Corporal Jones moment. There's always one person who's gonna come in last. <laughs> So that's why we mute, try and mute most people. And we, sense, we use visuals sensitively. Now, what I mean by that is an example. I've, I'm doing a talk and I decide to put a picture of the church up from the point of view of the users. Ah, oh, that's better. Somebody thinks I can concentrate on the reading now because they feel safe. They feel that 
actually this is the one place they miss at the moment. So if you don't like doing visuals, maybe you could just do one visual of the church, just showing the view from the pews, and you'll be surprised. People will say afterwards they felt they could concentrate. Isn't that funny? That's the one thing because they're in the safe place. Now you may want to, I, I would encourage you to use visuals, uh, but try and think about them a little bit. Uh, here's an example of a really rubbish visual, Solomon's dream. Wonder if you've noticed uh, what's wrong with this. Well, we've got some rubbish fonts. We've got some big ones and small ones. I deliberately placed one of them underneath your pictures. <laughs> so, just to be aware, the pictures will be on the right hand side of the, 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 the people will be on the right hand side of the screen when you're doing this. Try not to uh, have your words underneath that and try to uh, stimulate them. Um, it's very important to avoid the tendency to go into lecture mode with PowerPoint. So I put this in PowerPoint and I shared this. Uh, I'll put some notes if you like to how you do that, but there's tutorials on this. But it's very important that we keep this as a church, a spiritual occasion, not as a didactic uh, thing here. 1 Kings 3, it, what on earth is that telling us? It's just, uh, uh, it it's doesn't help us to, uh, to, um, to get into this. Yeah, how about this? I want to talk about grace. How can we describe God's love? We leave a pause. We we'll let them think about that. I wonder what this picture is telling us. We might even invite comments even. But just to think for a moment, what does this picture tell us? It's an open question and it invites us to reflect on, well, this is a, it's a beautiful place, but there's a sense of graciousness. There's a sense of abundance, there's a sense of peace. Uh, there is the picture will tell us so much more. I'm just going to talk briefly about music. Zoom wasn't designed with music in mind. Uh, there are some settings in there, <laughs> and I should have told Andy beforehand, in the advanced setting, uh, you can set the music, uh, well, because it's set to clip out background noise, it's set to, Zoom is set to clip out top and bottom, bottom frequencies, and you can unset that in these settings. The transmission quality depends on the internet speed. So, it may be good, maybe a bit all right, it may be awful. So one of the things we'll do is we make sure again, everybody's muted and we might actually want to interfere with this and as the leader actually mute people who are left because otherwise it will swing backwards and forwards. But it's uh, during, if you're, <coughs> let us say like me, I'm in a big town and I'm doing a service to people in the villages, they're going to get the most rubbish internet speed and the chances are their music will be the most affected. So if you are in, talking to villages and you're in the further regions of Essex, uh, don't do it. <laughs> don't put music in, it's not going to work. If you are all based in say, Havering or Dagnum, you'll get a pretty excellent signal. Um, or Billericay, Chelmsford, Wickford. Uh, all those sort of places. Everybody is in the same, close to the node. Uh, they will get this music quality reasonably good. And the best way you can do that is by either having a live musician or having um, or embedding a, a music, uh, an audio um, tape, an audio uh, file inside uh, a PowerPoint. So a little pause just, oh, and how do I start? I haven't deliberately told you all the details because there are endless Zoom videos. Just go on and Google whatever you want to do, setting up Zoom, using music in Zoom, uh, everything you want. There is an expert to tell you. So look at the Zoom, uh, look at that. Zoom classes, just briefly, 
building relationships, it enables the people of less, it's a Mary the Less in Little Puddlewick to feel connected. It's fairly easy to access. Um, what's, it'll take a little bit of time, you've got to keep going. Make sure the phone users can get in. And sharing files, you can put up Word, PowerPoint, anything you like, whatever's on your screen. If you're um, a, a Mac user, it'll show your Mac files. It's great for meetings, PCC meetings. Things to work on, you've got to plan ahead. You've really got to plan what's going to be in there. You've got to work, think through what information does, does everybody need in their hand. It's not so brilliant for large congregations. You won't all be able to see each other. Uh, but just remember there are people out of sight. They don't have to have those Zoom videos on. They can still see you. And remembering the phone users, music it is an art form. Uh, it can work a lot better in YouTube. So I'm just going to pause for a moment and ask if there's any questions at this stage. I want to unmute yourself if you're muted and just uh, any questions. Yeah, I was wondering about the telephone. How do you, there seem to be lots of phone numbers. How do you know which is the number to use and where do you find them? to tell people okay. about uh, the person who is the zoom host when they create when they schedule the meeting it will invite them if they want to to include some phone numbers uh, it will it will default to america but you have the person who's scheduling it should change those to uk and then when you send out the invitation uh, you Basically, that the host will copy in the entire uh, Zoom invitation, which will by then miraculously have two UK numbers. It doesn't need, it doesn't matter if there are eight people on phone, they can still use just the one number. Uh, it's the technology works. We've had in our church, I think we've had about six on the phone at once. And provided you're sensitive about muting, uh, you're, you don't use music um, and you remember to have a piece of, uh, they've got a piece of paper in their hands. They will tell you at the end of it, I'll check with them after service, but they will generally tell you they've had a good service and they've, they've felt, above all, they felt connected and, in, uh, and involved. So, so is it the number that says plus four four? Because they, they give you different oh, numbers. I, yeah, I, I, I've, I just edit that and I change 44 to O. So instead of saying plus 44208, I change it to O208. That is, that is uh, plus 44 is UK. Yeah, and, and will and it give the you other your one says, Does it give you your local area code after that? Like, because I'm Colchester, so it'd be 01206, or is it? Well, 0208 is a London number. It will. Yeah. It, it just means that they're phoning a London number. So it's not a local call then. It will be a, a, a distance call. Yeah. A little bit more of a distance call. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Can I just add into that that there are so you, you there are sort of four numbers that you can you can pick from. As I understand, you can pick any one of them, and then when you get through, you'll be prompted to add the. Uh, is it a 11 digit code that, you, that you've probably done to join this meeting, followed by the six digit passcode? Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, when you're, I would recommend that the host uh, doesn't bother with passcodes. You can, you can eliminate, mm. you can delete them. You can uh, not initiate a passcode. So uh, for, uh, just to make it easier, I, I usually have services without pass, passcodes. Uh, could so I ask? Could, sorry, could, sorry. Just, to, just to, could you like experiment by setting up a Zoom meeting for like someone in your own household to sort of phone into if they were in another room? You know, just to see if it works. Yeah, it works. Is that a possibility? You can no? do. Yes, you can. Yes, that okay. works. Yeah. And uh, what I will do occasionally, if I've 
uh, if I sense that, let us say there's an elderly person who's got a computer, they're struggling with it, uh, and they've not been able to use it satisfactorily, I would and that set up a Zoom uh, conference call with that person the day before and to make them feel that uh, we can solve the problems together. We'll talk it through and get it working for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've actually done that. I've helped a few people to actually get onto Zoom, but this is more for yeah. the people who haven't got the, the technology. Yeah, thank you. So I was just going to ask, if you're not usually the host and the vicar says to you, well, you can use, you can use the church Zoom to set up a course, do I just join as a host, sign in as a host? And if so, do I need any special password for that? Because it would be the church's uh, Zoom, not mine. Okay, so the host should set you up as a co-host. It right. is possible during the course of the call to change the host, or uh, but the, the host should really set you up in advance as co-host, and then you'll get the bottom the, the button at the bottom which says share. Right. Thanks. So I'm just going to stop the share now because I, what I want to do now is is pick up uh, another uh, Zoom video and uh, um, let me just, oops, uh, let me just find my second Zoom video because we're going to talk about uh, live streaming now. Uh, right, that's not the one, it's live streaming. Okay, and I'm going to set it to, uh, so all of these things, the it's a good idea to prepare for it in advance uh, to, so that you, uh, you've seen a, a video, you've seen a, a tutorial, and with that tutorial, uh, you feel that, you've, that somebody's talked you through it. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not difficult to, for them to do that. Okay, uh, just a moment. From, right. Now, I, this is where my, te my computer at this time is struggling a little bit with something I should have thought of, which was that actually, um, that actually uh, uh, because I'm using PowerPoint, uh, I'm using Office 365, it's using it off the internet. <laughs> yeah. So uh, because of that, it's struggling a little bit to, to work. So let me just, uh, I want to get this on to uh, from okay from the beginning. Okay, thank you. Streaming through Facebook. That's when we talk about live streaming. We're talking about Facebook. It's it's the the same thing. Live streaming is is if you like instead of uh, I would say the analogy being instead of a a, a, a meeting where everybody's involved, live streaming is a broadcast live streaming so uh, it is using a facility on your phone uh, to enable uh, a one-way broadcast it's very straightforward but a lot of churches started out with this at the very beginning and then uh, decided to move mm -hmm. on to more complex things so very low technology uh, well it's your phone uh, <laughs> it's setting up a Facebook uh, account for the for the churches there's not very much involved in the way of learning it can reach lots and lots of people if they've been told about to watch you probably heard extraordinary stories of churches where they've somehow got connection with uh some community in ingerson where, where we do live streaming um somebody in the community was quite fascinated by this and then re broadcast it or tells everybody uh, through the local community site and we had unbelievable amounts of viewing uh, less, at least in the early days hundreds and hundreds of people uh, the location's important because people like it what is important what they see on live streaming so here's the technology you need a Facebook page you uh, will need to make sure that hopefully your church has got one not all of our churches have got Facebook pages, but if you've got one, it's very simple. Go onto the Facebook uh, when you're looking at your mobile phone. It invites you to share something. 
and then invites you to go live. You need a mobile phone, you need a tripod. Now, tripods uh, come in, they're not expensive, they could be as little as 15 pounds or something, but you quite honestly can't be wobbling around with this. <laughs> and most of you have got to uh, look at this on laptops which hold you nice and secure. Hopefully your phone with a tripod will do the same sort of thing. Or some. Yeah. Setting up the church Facebook page is not technically <laughs> difficult. It's a bit of a journey. It does help if you're a Facebook person, if you, if you like Facebook. And this is an important question for your church. Are they Facebook viewers? Will they watch? Are they the Facebook generation? If they're not because they're younger and they use TikTok, or if they're older and they just, they're, they're terrified of Facebook, then uh, this might not be ideal. But on the other hand, you just might get an audience with a lot more people who you could not imagine. So when you do a service through, through this, it's really helpful to think about what will it look like to people outside. So we prepare the ground. We, we prepare the ground getting the Facebook page ready. Before the services, we put up a nice visual that says something's coming up on Sunday. If you have permission from your community, you might have some sort of a <coughs> graphic thing. You don't want to overdo that because obviously your community will chuck you out if you don't. Uh, how are you going to advertise it? How are you going to how are people going to know about this? You need to think about that. Uh, how would, what's the view from the pews? Now, surprisingly, this view, this is in one of our churches, it may not look attractive, but it will make the people in the church feel incredibly enabled and makes them feel they're in the right place. They, they feel very relaxed when they see this at home, comfortable. So it might be good to have your, uh, your Facebook stream from the, as it were, the view from the pews. So you're standing in front, just like a normal service. Uh, you might want to make sure that it looks better though some flowers. So um, uh, that's not a very attractive picture. How would I improve on it? Sound. If you're going to do live streaming in church, you, it's a good idea to switch on the sound system to get the volume up to the right level. If you're going to do your live streaming at home in your favourite armchair, you don't need to do that. In fact, in some ways you can do, I'm sure you've all seen nice Compline services done from home. That works well. You can, now one of the nice things about live stream, you can do music really, really well. You can have that lovely, peaceful piece of music. Instead of saying, well, I'll ha I won't have a hymn, I'll have uh, a CD next to me. Oh, how lovely. That could be beautiful. That could be some lovely, peaceful music. So instead of singing a hymn, you might say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a piece of reflective music. What a lovely service that could be. Have a little practice run first though, very important that you try this all out, uh, that you've, you've actually road tested it. Try a, a live stream, because uh, the advantage is if you don't tell people <laughs> they won't see it, so you can muck it up the first time. Uh, now everybody will say I don't know how to do it. Yes of course you don't know how to do it. This is where you look at the the uh, tutorials and there's so many nice people just waiting to tell you how to do it which is really good all the details will be there on your uh, on the on the tutorials now here's the I've put up a, a, a radio host as a picture because I'd say yeah treat it as a broadcast Imagine yourself like this radio presenter, he's talking to the world, no one can, he can't, he hasn't got a feeling of what it's like. But it's um, important to imagine that this is actually a Christian broadcast. The service is contained within the limitations of a broadcast. Keep to the same time, that's very important because if one of the, the slight drawbacks with uh, with live streaming is that if 
somebody joins one minute later, the last one minute will be clipped off uh, at the end. So it's uh, you've probably seen live stream where you wonder why it suddenly went boom and killed it at the end. And that's because of that. Uh, keep going, build up your audience. People will uh, grow after a time. Start on time, as I said, and do pray about this. So, uh, questions about that? Pause. Anyone can ask? Can, sorry. Yourself? Can I ask a question that's slightly not related to that bit? But if we use in the bottom um, where it says participants, you can raise your hand. Does it then, should it then notify the host that someone's got their hand raised rather than the host having to look for a physical hand? Uh, sorry, I'm just going to start my video again. <laughs> it couldn't cope with the technology. Uh, yes, that's a good idea. My face will, my picture will come back in a sec. Here we go. Yes, that's a, that's a very good idea uh, to use. It's suddenly to have a camera. <laughs> uh, yes, you can do the hand. Did you do the Zoom thing? Yeah. Sorry, Tim, I didn't quite catch what you said there. Did you mean Zoom hand holding? I did. Sorry, I was just I was going back slightly to a pre to a question I had. A yeah. Do you want to, uh, yes, you could do that. Yes, because that's, that's, that, that, Zoom actually allows people to hold their hands up. So, uh, uh, was there a question? The question was, because I've just been trying to do it with Elizabeth and she couldn't see my hand up. So there's a question, thanks Caroline. Um, there's a question on the chat line saying, what about copyright on live services? Do you know anything about copyright, Tim? Yeah, um, copyright is really comes into itself with YouTube. I'll talk about you that in a minute. Uh, with YouTube, you must be ever so careful about copyright. You really don't do it. It's, it's really important. With um, okay, well, this is the unofficial version. Is <laughs> If you're using analog, that is to say, there is somebody standing next to you playing a piece of music, then live stream is not going to pick it up. Uh, so, yeah, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be on the whole abusing that. Uh, so, but yeah, I'll come on to that with YouTube because that is incredibly important and you will be Absolutely, uh, YouTube has got the the uh, the potential to uh, to give you uh, a lot of grief about that if you're not careful. So, in a moment, I will uh, go on to uh, YouTube if you would like, uh, if you're ready. Um, uh, but I have to try and get the slideshow to to start from the beginning. Right. Oh, okay. Was there another question about live streaming? I've, I've put a question on um, on the chat. I don't know if you can see it, um, Tim. Okay. Thanks. Hi, Pauline. Uh, that, was, uh, yeah, that was about people joining in. Somebody came displaying all sorts. Yeah, all sorts. I'm mean, <laughs> not quite sure, Pauline, this was... This, this, it wasn't me. It was a <laughs> this is a euphemism for something? Um, well, they... What should I say? Selling all their wares. I would use the word prostitute. <laughs> it was quite scary. Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, I understand that. So, yes, that's a, that's a downside about not using the password. I've never come across this. That was on live streaming. Oh, well, okay. I. That's uh, that's a bit odd, isn't it? That. That's something we need, probably need to look at the church's website. It sounds as if the church's website had been hacked. That's that's the only explanation I can think of. If uh, sorry, the, it sounds like the church's Facebook 
site of being well, hacked. Well, no one else seemed to be aware of it. That was the thing. Um, that was okay. what, yeah. Anyway, perhaps I've just thrown a big something in at you, but, you know, I mean, you know, you wondered about their own security on their own computer, but, um, you know, you couldn't believe that they'd been looking at anything that they shouldn't be looking at at other times type of thing. But I can't seem to get through. Well, Zoom, with Zoom, you know, you lock people in, don't you? Um, you got your password. And I know there were some security issues with it initially, but, um, you know, so the... They won't use Zoom or anything, so it's a bit of an issue, really. So I just thought I'd ask. Yeah, okay. I don't think there's anything that you could do which is specific to using um, the, 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 the technology for worship. It's just good computer security. Mm, yeah. It's, just, it's yeah. kind of a personal issue in, in the ways, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, any other questions about live streaming? If not, Can I'm going to I talk ask about... Can question of yeah. people? Can I ask what proportion of people are using live streaming as opposed to the other means? Oh. Uh, we didn't ask that question. I, I, I suspect it's probably low. But you may have had an opportunity to do live streaming for a morning prayer or compline. I wonder if you any hands up for anyone who's done who's done their own who's who's done a compline service or a live stream. Yeah. So that's quite straightforward. So uh, I would suggest you when you've got a little bit of you, that you I would suggest you talk to your vicar about that and just say how about next time you do a compline that you perhaps i could have a go and you'll be amazed it's it's not difficult it's really worth having a little trial uh so you've got your phone you've got your tripod you've got your fireside chair and a candle and your uh common worship for compline book uh and a bible it couldn't be Simple, really. Okay, so yes, saying you live stream. We'll talk about yeah, live streaming improves the practice. Thanks, Jan. Yes, that's right. Live stream. You will get confidence uh, through using Compline, uh, morning prayer, whatever other weekday services that you do. We're going to talk about Facebook now, if you, if I may. So, uh, okay, David, thank you. Some people got a YouTube service. Okay, let's share this and we'll go on to uh, making YouTube videos. Um, now, may, you might think that YouTube videos are really, really complex, really, really difficult, but actually it's just what the phone is designed to do, which is make a photograph or make, in this case, a video. It's uh, the phone, in the hands of a teenager, they'll, they'll knock up a YouTube video in no time, but it's got the advantage, some, one really important advantage. If you have people in your congregation who don't like Facebook or they don't like uh, Zoom, they watch YouTube because what do you need to do to watch, to watch YouTube? You just need to have a computer or a phone. You can get there. It's very user friendly to the viewer. You, and if somebody, if you make a YouTube video and you have a 99 year old in your church who hasn't even got a computer, you could even burn it onto a disc and pop it through their door. So uh, yes, we've, uh, I made a video the other day, well, a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago when we had VE Day, I rather recklessly said that I'd make a film for VE Day and I interviewed people, uh, well, I, I got them to tell me their stories of VE Day and the wartime stories. And then I put together a fairly simple 
um, video, a uh, visual thing of pictures to do with their stories. Just, uh, and I, I mean, this is a little bit going up to the next stage, knitting together videos. But anyway, what I was going to say was, when I put that together, everybody wanted to see it because the 90 year olds were on it. And I put it out on YouTube and uh, so far 500 people have seen that and the number goes up every week. It's, uh, it just keeps going on and on. So YouTube is very easy. It's easy to watch. It's not so easy to make, but it's very, very easy to watch. Um, the disadvantages are it's a bit of work the first time. You've got to make your first YouTube video will be a project. You'll, you'll need a week or two to prepare it and overcome problems. And you need to shoot a trial video. So uh, I would recommend it. The nice thing about it is once you've mastered the technology, you can do this. You could do uh, a nice sermon and then the vicar knits it together. Or you could be the one to knit it together. Not too difficult, really, but you're, you're, it is a project. You've just got to, uh, to imagine that it's going to take a little bit of time. There are lots of tutorials out there. But very important questions. Who is the audience? Will anyone ever see it? Now, I started by making uh, some YouTube videos where I thought I'd just do a talk and I would do a, an interesting talk. And I aimed at my Facebook friends, who include my family, who don't go to church, and other friends, ex-work, who don't go to church. And they were the most enthusiastic. <laughs> so that's an interesting thought. Quite a lot of people saw those. And I've done ones which are exclusively aimed at church. People do whole services, put knitted together, and they work really, really well. Then you've got the music on and so on. So, is it, but be aware that it might, if you don't have a clear idea of what you're doing, then not many people will see it. You, you kind of need to put it down on a piece of paper, work out what, are, what's, what am I going to, what's my target congregation? You need to be able to keep it so simply. Um, uh, yes, I need to look, I need to have uh, a few weeks and, and lots of enthusiasm, enthusiasm to put it together. I need to keep it very simple. Uh, be aware this will be available for a long time. <laughs> so, so try and make every service on YouTube uh, a, a sort of give it a, a timeless quality about it. Yes, don't say uh, we've just heard something in the news like this, and I'm going to pray about this. Well. Uh, that might not be ideal for, for YouTube videos. You need to set up your YouTube channel. Now, I'm not going to tell you how to do this because there's tutorials, but just to let you know, it's not difficult. It'll take a, about half an hour to set up a channel. Uh, it will invite you to set up account verification, uh, which if you don't do that, you'll have a 30 minute limit. Which is quite interesting. I, I did. I made about four videos before I verified the account, uh, just to say that you're a real person. But it meant uh, I did short, four short talks, and uh, it was good discipline. <laughs> now, a little bit of technology. Your phone has got to have massive storage on it. Massive. Mm. Uh, you will need to have on your phone a whole gig of. Uh, or possibly, possibly two, and how can you do that? Not difficult. Just buy a little, uh, a little um, a disc uh, for about ten quid, and, and direct all the phone uh, the storage, all your pictures and so on, to the disc. It's as simple as that. So your phone will probably not have a spare gig on it, but guess what? You can buy. A disc, a storage disc, which will have vast amounts of, I mean, really vast. <laughs> you could buy ones with a terabyte of data. <laughs> Ridiculous amounts, not much. Expense. You will need a, a tripod. Um, you could use a book rest, but I would suggest a tripod for 10 or 15 quid. Uh, 
if you want, uh, there is a uh, free video editing, editing software. This isn't essential, but as you get a little bit better, you'll want to clip off that hiccup at the beginning. You want to clip off the last second or two. But for the beginning, does it matter? No, not really. It, it's not essential, but your teenage family members will do video editing on their phones with a simple free app called Quick. It'll just enable you to clip off the embarrassing bits or, and knit together other things. So amazing, the teenagers seem to be able to, while they're watching television, edit a very passable, <laughs> passable YouTube film. You could always get them to do it for you. <laughs> so uh, lighting is quite important. This lady, now this, if you just look at the picture here, she stands out from her background. She's well lit. You can see her. She actually, uh, her whole uh, image is very uh, pleasing. And that, that's been achieved with some uh, fairly low cost lighting. In the lower picture, there's me with, uh, there's actually what's called softbox lighting. I, I spent about 40 pounds on that. And I've got two large uh, fold out uh, lights on they're actually on tripods uh, so you might want to consider as two point videos studio lighting that I would stand out uh, <laughs> don't, don't do it that sort of thing. so but do it in the church So you might want to ask with the right like yourself questions. How are we doing for time? Just check 10 minutes. Put a bit lighting. I'm not running on a bit. Reasons don't accept outside. Um, put together your talk on paper. Scout out the venue. Again, check the view from the pews. It's most comfortable to have the view from from where you're aiming. Too many clever Mr. Cameras just sort of do a step. What equipment will I own? Uh, the afternoon. Sitting on your phone. If you want to do more complex things, perception. 15 pounds. about I did this for a day and it's I have to you can uh, uh, Um, YouTube will police it very, very precisely. So, uh, what I decided to do on my VE Day thing, I uh, used a bit of newsreel footage. I asked the owner first, I thought it might be a good idea. The owner came back to me and said, For what you're doing, no problem. I then got a, uh, when I, I put it out on YouTube, about a week later, I got um, uh, I got a notice of a threatened strike, and what that means is they thought I yes, had I, 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 I am too. I'm afraid we've lost Tim Tim Sound at that point. Oh, Tim, thank you very much. If you can still hear us. I think that was getting towards the end of Tim's excellent presentation. Um, what we'll do is we'll close there. We'll get our, um, ourselves back together uh, and back online. Our next session starts at 12 o'clock and that's going to be on the subject um, of um, uh, 
leading service of the word online or offline. I'm not going to be talking about the technology, but I am going to be talking through the structure of a service of the word and the requirements that the Church of England asks of it. Uh, feel free to stick around or to go have yourself a coffee and be back at 12 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>